speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And a hearty good morning to you. Happy St. Nicholas Day. Good morning. Uh, my name is Marianne Buddy, and if I didn't meet you the last time I, I was at St. Nick's, which was way too long ago, <laughs> but as someone was saying as I was coming in this morning, we'd all been away for so long, right? And it's just wonderful for those of us who, are, who can be in worship to be together, and also those of you who are worshiping from your homes or wherever you are, that we can be together. And I'm really happy, really happy to be with you. And I, um, I was thinking about how, um, how cool it is to have a church named for the saint who is most associated with Christmas. I just, you know, you're pretty, pretty unique that way. <laughs> um, and I suspect by now you've, you know quite a lot about him, right? I mean, those of you who have been around the church year after year, you, you know something about this extraordinary man who was kind of a rock star of his time. I mean, he, he was right up there like with the Virgin Mary in terms of saints that people thought could do the most amazing things. I mean, the legends that grew up around this man that is your, um, your church's inspiration is nothing short of breathtaking. But let's just tick off a few. What are some of the things you know about Nicholas? Food for the poor, he, a huge acts of generosity, right? Yeah. Anyone else? Money for dowries. Money for dowries, particularly for impoverished girls who had nothing, right? Anyone else? Gifts for children. Gifts for children. And the best part about them is that he really liked giving gifts in secret, yes. right? It was like a, he didn't, which is where our gift giving all the funny traditions we have about, I mean, don't get me started about like where the chimney came from and all of that, but it's the same <laughs> idea, right? It's the same idea that there's a, there's a surprise element to it, right? So this gift giving notion, which really is at the heart of where all of our traditions around gift giving comes at Christmas. It gets associated with Jesus and the Christ child later on, but it's really from Nicholas that all of that comes. I suspect you all know. Um, so I actually, I, I read the list of all the things he's the patron saint of, and it was like four paragraphs. So like everybody wanted Nicholas. But So in honor of your patron saint, and um, I'd like to speak to you today about one of the ways, the most powerful and life-affirming ways we can gift one another both in terms of what we can give and receive from one another. And the word used to describe this gift I'm about to talk about has um, really uh, big religious overtones, which is unfortunate because then it gets reserved for things that professional religious people like Beth and me do, um, which, is, which is not the case at all. It's for all of us all the time. Um, and the gift, and, it, and by the way, this is the other great thing about this gift, it doesn't have to cost a penny. Hmm. Um, it can, it can cost, we, sometimes we give a lot um, in service to this kind of giving, but you don't have to spend a cent to give this amazing gift. Um, and the gift is that of our blessing. I'm going to unpack that word throughout the sermon, but let me give you an example. A friend of mine, who's my age, so she's in her 60s, her mom just died, and um, which was really hard for her. It was really one of those sad, sad deaths, and, but she told me that her, last, her mother's last words to her, very last words before she, before she left, was, um, were words of blessing, and this is what her mom said. First of all, she thanked her daughter for all that she had done for her. Right? She told her how proud she was mm. of the life her daughter was living. And she, um, she told her to keep going, just keep on living her life, and that it was okay to let her mom go. Right? Now I tell you, that blessing is going to stay with my friend for the rest of her life. Right? She'll never forget it. 
But I'm here to tell you we don't have to wait until that final goodbye to say those kinds of words to one another. Um, we can say those things all the time. And in fact, we do. Much of the kindnesses that we naturally offer one another um, are simply blessings by another name. But to recognize in such gestures, um, to recognize them as, as a spiritual practice is a way to encourage us to be mindful that when we say those things and when we do those things, we are actually instruments of God's love for other people that people experience not only the kindnesses that we're offering when we say or give them, they're experiencing themselves as being loved by God. And I suspect when you're on the receiving end of such kindnesses, something like that happens for you as well. So I'd like to talk about some ways that we can do this and how, as we give in this way, we not only obviously draw closer to one another, we actually draw closer to God. Um, now, the first is probably the most obvious, and that we bless other people when we choose to offer something concrete as an expression of kindness to someone who is in need or in pain. And Nicholas was all over that, right? I mean, he did that all the time. He went, he deliberately sought out people who were suffering and thought of the things that he could do to make their lives a little bit easier. Um, and that's, um, and Jesus was all about that too. I mean, all about that. Um, he went out of his way all the time to look for people who were hurting and to do something concrete to make their situation better. And, um, and one of the things that happens when you're on the receiving end of that kindness, when you're in need or other people are on, on the receiving end of our kindness, um, as, one, as one man, the, the late Irish poet John O'Donohue described it, when someone is kind to you like that, you feel, you feel seen and understood. And there's no judgment or harsh perception directed at you. Kindness, he says, has gracious eyes. Right. So personal story. Um, late August, I had um, one of those really embarrassing bicycle accidents right in front of my house. Oh. Okay. Yeah, right in front of my house. Now, in, in fairness to me, um, my house is on this really steep hill. Mm -hmm. And I was going up the steep hill. And I, as I sometimes do foolishly, when I'm going up a steep hill, I was looking down instead of up, because I didn't want to see how far I had to go, right? <laughs> really dumb because I also didn't see that my neighbor had parked her van right in front of her house, right? So I looked up and there was the van and down I went. Um, and as it turned out, I really messed up my wrist. Like, I mean, I, I really, I broke my wrist in a couple of places. And, um, and this man was driving by, a total stranger was driving by right as I fell. And he stopped his car and he helped me get up. And he said, where are you going? Where are you going? And I'm like, well, I live right here. <laughs> and, he, and he didn't laugh. He just said, well, let me help you. Let me help you. And he got, he got me inside, made sure I was all right. And then he apologized because he had little kids in the car. He said, I really have to get back to my kids, right? And he's like, I can't tell you what his kindness meant to me. My husband was out of town. I mean, I managed to call, you know, to get an Uber to the emergency room. But I don't even, I don't know his name. I don't even remember what he looks like, right? but I will never forget his kindness to me, complete stranger in a moment of need. Now, in a world where we hear every day story upon story about how mean we can be to one another, I think stories like the one I've just told you are like the, a corrective to last a lifetime, right? We can be that way for each other. And once you've experienced that kind of blessing, you want to pass it on to someone else. Later that night, I was sitting in the emergency room, and there, was a there were a lot of people there, all of us, sick or wounded in one way or another. I mean, we were just the most sorry-looking species of humanity, <laughs> right? And this one woman who was sitting next to me really needed to tell me her life story, right? And I was exhausted, and my arm hurt like crazy. But in part because of the man and his kindness to me, I found it within me to listen to her. 
you know? And I suspect because I did that to her, like maybe she, do you know what I mean? We just, that kind of passing it on. So that's just one example of how when we consciously receive and give blessings, how we spread it around in the world. Right. One more example in this, in this way. I was, um, I was just at the Bishop Walker School uh, this, this past week, and the Bishop Walker School, as you may know, is this tuition-free school that the diocese has sponsored in, that provides an education for African-American boys in Southeast D.C., which is one of the most um, nationally uh, disadvantaged neighborhoods in the country, right? And the new head of school wanted to show me everything, even though I've been there a dozen times. And so he's showing me the new building, and, he sh and we walk into the library, which is this state-of-the-art, gorgeous library that has been built and filled by volunteers. Volunteers from around the diocese have bought all the books, they staff the library, they are there every single day making sure that the kids who are there can have access to books that make them want to read and also give them positive examples for themselves. Now, endeavors like that are only possible when people like you and me decide that we're going to invest in something. For blessings to make an impact in the life of a child, you have to be there day after day after day after day, right? And we can't do that by ourselves. We have to do that together. And later today in the service, as you know, we're going to dedicate your offerings to St. Nicholas, right? Some of you have made a financial commitment to St. Nicholas to ensure that the ministry continues on. None of us can do that by itself, but be all of you together and with a lot of grace from God, you will anchor yet again this community of hope and faith named for the one who cared for children in this part of Germantown. And that's something that, that's a blessing that you give and that you make sure is there for others. So that's one way, showing up, being present, giving what we can. The other way, and this is actually the easy one, easy in the sense that this is the, this is comes for free part. And that's simply paying attention to what we say to one another. Just what we say. Um, again, John O'Donohue calls this, with our words, drawing a circle of light and strength around another person. And one of the ways I try to do this is when I'm in conversation with people. Same with a family member or a coworker or a friend. And right when we're at the point of saying goodbye, I try to think of a word or a phrase or an encouragement that I can say for that person. And, I, and I, it usually comes in one of three ways. I try to, it could be some quality that I genuinely admire in them, right, that I want to lift up. Or something they said in our conversation that I want to reflect back to them because it was so meaningful. Or if I know they're going through a hard time, to simply acknowledge that and let them know that I'm there for them. Now it's important not to overdo this because you don't want to shower people with a lot of false praise, but it's trying to go deep and speak from your heart. Um, and that's something to consider. I don't know if you are, have you, if you, have you all sent out your Christmas cards already? Are you those kind of people? <laughs> okay. Well, for those of you who haven't what? yet, um, this is something, because I have to admit, uh, I have to, confession here, um, Christmas cards and I have a love-hate relationship um, because I, um, but this year it occurred to me that I was going to, with every card I wrote, I was going to offer that kind of word or blessing to the people I write to. In other words, not, I, I might share a little bit of news about myself and I'll have a, you know, the generic Merry Christmas blessing, but I'm also going to say something really specific about them and why I love them or what they mean to me. So that when they receive that card, they receive a particular blessing from me. And when cards begin to arrive in my mail, into my house, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pray a blessing over each one that I receive. Just pass that on as something you might consider. Now one final thing, I'm bringing this home now, but um, one final practice of blessing, and this is the hardest one. This is when we learn to accept the blessings that come to us in situations 
that we would have given anything to avoid, right? Or to witness when other people can say for themselves, out of this hardship, blessing has come. It's never helpful to point that out to another person, right? It's always better to let them come to it themselves. But to witness it and to hear them say it or to say it for yourself. And one way to appreciate the power of all of this is to imagine a day without blessings like this. Imagine a day devoid of anything that I've described. And um, so I was thinking about the antithesis to St. Nicholas in the Christmas canon, Ebenezer Scrooge, <laughs> right? Ebene Charles Dickens, who, by the way, is also responsible for most of what we celebrate at Christmas. Um, but Ebenezer Scrooge was a man who had a lot of money, had a lot of influence and power, but he, held, he refused to bless anybody with what he had. He was the most miserable human being. He made everybody else around him miserable, but, but he was so miserable that the people he made miserable had pity on him, right? Until the night he was visited in his dream, you remember? Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future. And by the visitation of those ghosts while he slept, he was given a chance to redeem his life through the reclaiming of blessing. And the story ends, as you recall, with him lavishly extending blessings and embraced in the family and friends he once shunned. It's almost like he's born again through his blessing. So, if you want to be on the side of what's possible and what's good in this world, blessing will get you there. If you want to be the kind of person that others look to and are drawn to, a word of blessing goes so far. It's so easy to be critical, so easy to complain, but when we take the effort to take a deep breath and offer our gift of blessing, we align ourselves with the redeeming power of God that will come to us in the blessing of Jesus this Christmas and in every day of our lives. So I encourage you, as I encourage myself, to strive to be people of what's possible, of all that is good through the power and the gift of our blessings. Amen. Amen. Amen.